Thank you. The Basic Research Prize recognizes researchers who make significant contributions to the advancement of cardiovascular science and who head outstanding research laboratories. This year's honor goes to Dr. Glenn Fishman of the New York University School of Medicine. Dr. Fishman is director of the Leon H. Charney Division of Cardiology and is the William Goldring Professor of Medicine. He is vice chair for research in the Department of Medicine. In his distinguished research career, Dr. Fishman has made numerous vital discoveries of the molecular defects associated with cardiovascular diseases, especially those responsible for acquired or inherited heart rhythm disorders and cardiomyopathies. Among Dr. Fishman's advances has been the creation of genetically engineered small and large animal models of cardiovascular disease. These models enable Dr. Fishman and his colleagues to explore the molecular abnormalities producing heartbeat irregularities and experiment with highly novel techniques to overcome them. Areas of discovery by Dr. Fishman and his colleagues include inherited arrhythmic diseases and cardiomyopathies such as long QT and Brugada syndromes, oculodental digital dysplasia, and hypertrophic and dilated cardiomyopathy. He has made important strides in studies of models of sudden cardiac death as well. His most recent work has focused on the role of the specialized cardiac electrical system in normal physiology and in disease, including the use of stem cells. Progress towards attaining the worthy goals of medical research almost invariably begins at the basic scientist workbench. For such incubators of enlightenment have been more productive in our battle against cardiovascular disease, and fewer have accomplished more than the laboratory of Dr. Glenn Fishman. It is now my privilege to introduce the recipient of this year's Basic Research Prize, Dr. Glenn Fishman. Thank you, Mark, uh, and thank you for all you have done for the AHA during your presidency. This award is especially meaningful to me. My research career was launched exactly 25 years ago with a grant and aid from the New York City affiliate of the AHA. It marked the beginning of a lifelong association with the AHA, a relationship that has led to many great friendships and immeasurable personal satisfaction. David Brooks recently wrote in the New York Times about Lady Gaga and the life of passion. Like musicians, the most successful scientists I know are passionate individuals. They are driven by a deep curiosity about the world around them and draw pleasure from unraveling the mysteries of the world we live in. As Brooks stated, the passionate expose their vulnerabilities with courage and are unwilling to be ruled by public opinion. My first scientific mentors, Leslie Leinwan, Jim Scheuer, and the late Ed Sonneblick at Albert Einstein College of Medicine were instrumental in my career. Together, they created a nurturing and supportive environment for fearless scientific inquiry. They established what was arguably the first molecular cardiology program in the country, an incubator for future leaders in cardiovascular research. And whether by design or luck, they found the secret sauce, producing the likes of Peter Buttrick, Rick Kitsis, and Beth McNally, free friends and colleagues who could easily be standing up here today instead of me. When I moved to NYU, I was given a unique opportunity to assemble my own team of passionate scientists. And during the past decade, I have benefited from the intelligence, counsel, and friendship of many wonderful colleagues. Judy Hockman, last year's Clinical Research Prize winner. Ed Fisher, the George Lyman Duff Award winner. Catherine Moore, the Jeffrey Hogue Arteriosclerosis Prize winner. Mario Delmar, Greg Morley, and Sylvia Priori, to name just a few. I also want to acknowledge and thank past and current members of my lab, especially Stacy Rentschler, Benedetta Palante, Eugene Kim, Karen Moss, and David Park. They are all rising stars, and I hope I have passed along to them an enduring passion for fearless scientific inquiry. And finally, no speech is complete without thanking family, and this will be no exception. 
Joanne, my wife of 31 years, has lived through the roller coaster ride and mood swings of failed grant proposals and rejected papers. And I thank her for reminding me that it will be okay. I also want to thank my three kids for putting up with the crazy professor they call dad. Their successes, already quite remarkable, are a constant source of delight. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Dr. Fishman. The Clinical Research Prize recognizes an individual who is making outstanding contributions to the advancement of cardiovascular science and who heads a distinguished clinical research laboratory. The recipient of this year's award is Dr. Jackson Wright, Jr., a professor of medicine at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine and director of the Clinical Hypertension Program for University Hospitals at Case Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. During his lengthy career in clinical research and education in hypertension, Dr. Wright has held leadership roles in most major clinical trials in African-American populations over the past two and a half decades. These studies have significantly increased the knowledge base for more effective treatment of high blood pressure and chronic kidney disease. Dr. Wright's leadership in National Institutes of Health-funded trials with large minority representation has led to important advances in the treatment of hypertension, which disproportionately affects African Americans. A major focus for Dr. Wright has been equity in health outcomes for all population groups. He has published extensively with more than 300 articles, book chapters, and abstracts, and has served on multiple national and international advisory panels. Dr. Wright is also a current member of the Hypertension Guidelines Task Force of the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology, and is a longtime volunteer of the American Heart Association. The lives of countless patients around the world have been improved thanks to Dr. Wright's outstanding work. It is my distinct honor to introduce the recipient of the 2015 Clinical Research Prize, Dr. Jackson Wright, Jr. Thank you, Dr. Krager. My thanks also uh, to those who have nominated me for this award and to the awards committee. It is indeed an honor for me to accept this clinical research award from the American Heart Association. However, as most of us in academic medicine, especially those whose career has been devoted to the conduct of clinical research, and certainly the conduct of multi-center uh, clinical trials, know that anyone standing here is taking the credit for the expertise, effort, and accomplishments of many. I've been very fortunate in my career to have had a career where I get paid well to do what I would do for free and to work with colleagues whom I now consider family and to have support staff that have supported me over the years as much as I, as I have tried to support them and who manage me as much as I manage them. And I now accept this award on behalf of them all. A few people making it possible for me to be here obviously include my family. I've been blessed with having two parents throughout most of my life. Uh, my mother at age 94 could not make it here but remains an anchor in my life. I've been fortunate, I was fortunate to have my father for 87 years. Uh, he instilled in me the audacity to try long before there was the audacity of hope. My wife Molly is in the audience and I thank her for all her love and support over our 48 years of marriage. My daughter, I, I wish my daughter could be here, but she remains too ill. 
and there are few dear friends that will go unmentioned uh, that I cannot say enough about. I need to acknowledge the University of Pittsburgh, including uh, my PhD advisor, Dr. Clinton Quarter, who gave me the opportunity to attempt the MD and PhD on credentials that would now put any academic program in court. I am proud to say that I am a product of affirmative action. Any institution that accepted me today would be in court over why I was accepted over someone else's child. Little in my paper file would have predicted my future academic accomplishments. However, during the short tenure of affirmative action, it did for me what it was intended to do. It gave me an opportunity, not a guarantee, and then placed the onus on me to succeed or fail. Being a product of the hypertension program at the University of Michigan, I benefited very much from the mentorship of Drs. O.T. Randall and Steve O'Julius and others there. My relationship with Dr. O.T. Randall from mentor to friend and collaborator and always a sounding board has been my model for support of other black and minority faculty coming behind. The best investments I ever made were the many long distance uh, telephone calls to Los Angeles and to Dr. Julian Haywood for advice on many levels. As I indicated, I stand here accepting the credit for the work done by many. In the African American study of kidney disease and hypertension trial, there were 21 clinical centers and PIs, even more importantly, the coordinators who followed and retained these participants for more than 10 years. In the All Hat trial, I was privileged to work with renowned, the renowned names in hypertension and cardiovascular research which formed the steering committee for that trial, and 625 investigators and coordinators. You have heard and will hear more about the SPRINT trial tomorrow. I can't say enough about my colleagues who have led this trial, from Jeff Cutler, who pushed the concept of SPRINT through NHLBI for funding, to Paul Welton, who brilliantly led and leads the steering committee, uh, to the 102 site PIs and their outstanding coordinators. And I definitely cannot ignore the talented and dedicated team that I work with at Case University Hospitals over the last quarter century. They uh, both uh, previously and now that my current uh, group. And I make special mention of a special group of project officers at the National Institutes of Health. I previously named Jeff Cutler, who was a champion instigator for trials going all the way back to Mr. Fit. Dr. Larry Agadoa, who gave me my first leadership position in the ASH trial. Jeff, uh, Jeff Cutler uh, and uh, Paula Einhorn in the All Hat trial. And Larry Fine and Joni, uh, 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 Joni Snyder and Jeff Cutler again in Sprint. These are all outstanding scientists in addition to their talents as navigators through the political and funding environment at NIH. And finally, when I look at the number of black faculty and investigators when I started out as a trainee a little, a little over two years ago, uh, the numbers were small, uh, only about 2.4% with most housed at, historic, at the two historically black uh, uh, universities, uh, Howard and Meharry. And when I look back at the number of black faculty today, after more than 35 years, the numbers have increased, but remain trivial, gaining only or less than a point, one percentage point. In addition, most of the increase does not come from investigators that are descendants of the slaves that built this country and suffered its consequences. We simply can no longer deny significant effective investment in our black youth. In closing, on behalf of my collaborators, I want to again thank you for the recognition bestowed upon us by this Clinical Research Award. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Wright. The Population Research Prize recognizes an individual who is making outstanding contributions to the advancement of cardiovascular science and who heads a major population research laboratory. This year's recipient is Dr. Gregory Burke, a professor and director of the Division of Public Health Sciences at the Wake Forest University School of Medicine. Dr. Burke has been conducting population-based research in cardiovascular disease for more than 30 years. For a number of years, he has served as a principal investigator or co-investigator of multiple cardiovascular epidemiology studies, showing his long-term commitment to population-based cardiovascular disease research. Among those studies is the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis. Dr. Burke's contributions, leadership, and continuing commitment to MESA have enabled high-caliber population-based cardiovascular disease research to emerge. He has been the steering committee chair since its inception and is the principal investigator for the Wake Forest Field Center. MESA has continued to flourish over the last 15 years as Dr. Burke has established it as a true population laboratory with 135 funded ancillary studies to the parent study and has welcomed the involvement of hundreds of investigators and colleagues. Together with his team of collaborators, he has been at the forefront of research demonstrating that certain non-invasive measures can be effective at the population-based level for prediction of cardiovascular disease risk and cardiovascular disease prevention in multi-ethnic populations. This has been one of the most significant advances in the field of population-based cardiovascular epidemiology research in recent decades. Dr. Burke has been a mentor and advocate for many emerging and established leaders in this field. He also has held major leadership roles with the American Heart Association and has served on several NIH committees as he has helped to steer the field of population-based cardiovascular research into a new era. Please join me in welcoming the recipient of this year's Population Research Prize, Dr. Gregory Burke. Thank you, Dr. Krieger, and good afternoon. It's truly an honor to be recognized by my peers for this prestigious award. But in fact, research is a team sport. And while individuals are honored, my achievements reflect the work and commitment of many great scientific collaborators. Throughout the years, I've been blessed to have many great mentors at many institutions that supported my career. These include Bob Wallace and Ron Lauer from the University of Iowa, Gerald Berenson from the Vogelusa Heart Study, Henry Blackburn at the University of Minnesota, and Kurt Ferberg at my current institution where I've been for the last 25 years at Wake Forest University. I want to thank my many senior and junior colleagues who have made scientific discovery both productive and fun. I believe there's never been a better time for cardiovascular discovery. Ongoing advances in science will provide even greater opportunities to reach our ultimate goal of reducing, not just reducing, but eliminating cardiovascular disease. Future efforts in discovery and translation, however, will require even greater cross-disciplinary collaboration. As Mark mentioned in MESA, which is a cohort study of nearly 7,000 participants, We've aggressively sought out new collaborators and new ideas. It has absolutely enhanced our scientific discovery and resulted in more than 900 publications and about 140 extramurally funded investigator initiated grants looking at novel ideas. The American Heart Association, exemplified by this meeting and by efforts such as the Cardiovascular Genome Phenome Study, has consistently provided an excellent forum for interaction between basic clinical, and population researchers. As a population scientist, I've been fortunate to work in a large number of cohort studies and clinical trials. 
it's important to note that the results from those studies would not have been possible without the altruism of thousands upon thousands of research participants. A vital part of a successful life is balancing a busy work life with a gratifying personal life. I especially want to thank my wife, Barb, who's in the audience, and our two great children, Kimberly and Dan. You can, you can clap for Barb. <laughs> for their unfailing support and patience. Thanks again for this tremendous honor. Congratulations, Dr. Burke. The Eugene Brownwald Academic Mentorship Award honors a special individual who, for at least 20 to 25 years, has successfully mentored promising young academicians. This year, the award goes to Dr. Michael Creakey of the Department of Medicine of the University of California, San Diego, in La Jolla, California. He is Distinguished Professor and Chief of the Division of Preventive Medicine in the Department of Family and Preventive Medicine. He also is a distinguished professor in the Division of Cardiology in the Department of Medicine. During a career spanning four decades, Dr. Creakey has achieved success as a medical scientist, physician, and educator while serving as a dedicated mentor to more than 500 junior faculty, fellows, and other trainees. Dr. Creakey has made major contributions to the study of cardiovascular disease epidemiology. He and his colleagues have documented their findings in more than 500 reports in prominent scientific journals. Dr. Creakey has blended his busy professional schedule with effective mentoring, providing encouragement and direction to numerous colleagues who now hold highly responsible positions in medical practice, research, and academia. His mentees credit Dr. Creakey with putting extraordinary time and effort into mentoring and providing honest comments and constructive criticism of their work. Often these connections last many years through successes successive phases of training and career development. His colleagues consistently say they receive from Dr. Creakey close personal attention and respect. It is my pleasure to present the 2015 Eugene Brownwald Academic Mentorship Award to Dr. Michael Creakey. Thank you, Mark, for that wonderful introduction. I would particularly like to thank two groups of people. The first group is those who mentored me. There were many, but I only have time to mention a few. First, Joe Stokes was the founding dean of the School of Medicine at UCSD and later chairman of our Department of Community Medicine. He was a true friend, a thoughtful mentor, and the closest thing to a life coach I ever had. I miss him. Elizabeth Barrett Connor hired me to my first faculty position and instructed me thoughtfully in both the research and teaching arenas for many years. John Ross was chief of cardiology at UCSD and the editor of circulation when he asked me to serve as an associate editor for epidemiology and prevention in 1988. The editors met every Tuesday night for four hours and his wisdom and guidance was formidable. John was the Brunwald awardee in 2004. Dr. Darwin Labarth in 1980 invited me to join the faculty of the annual 10-day seminar on the epidemiology and prevention of cardiovascular disease. I learned much from his leadership and 36 years later, I'm still serving on the faculty. Darwin was the Brunwald awardee in 2007. Finally, Arndt Spronick helped me understand the pathophysiology of peripheral arterial disease, which was critical to our subsequent studies of this condition. The second group I refer to as my mentees, but also mentors, because, because I learned much from each of them. Of many mentees, I mention only the five who conspired to nominate me for this award. Their names and current positions are on this slide. They were led by Mary McDermott, who I've collaborated with for over two decades. Her work is every bit as good as her prestigious titles and positions. Victor Abayans came to us as a visiting fellow a decade ago, interested in peripheral artery disease. He is now a department head, and his work is renowned. 
I served as mentor for both Joe Wicks and Matt Allison at the beginnings of their careers when both held American Heart Association Fellow to Faculty Awards less than a decade ago. They are now both highly accomplished, noted, as noted on this slide, full tenured professors. Finally, Christina Wassel came to us right out of her doctoral training a few years ago and had just been named associate professor at the University of Vermont. With mentees like these, I must say it's not too difficult to be a good mentor. Finally, my sincere thanks to the American Heart Association for this wonderful award. And I wanted to add also that I have one other person that goes in the class of mentees, and that's my wife, Nan, who's in the audience, and two other people that go in the class of mentors, mentees, and that's my two sons, Jeff and Shane. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Creaky. The Research Achievement Award recognizes a lifetime of distinguished scientific achievement in cardiovascular research and or teaching. The award this year goes to Dr. Harry Dietz, the Victor A. McCusick Professor of Medicine and Genetics at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, an investigator in the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and director of the William S. Smilo Center for Marfan Syndrome Research. We honor Dr. Dietz for his life-saving fundamental discoveries related to the causes and treatment of aortic aneurysm, a disorder that contributes to death in up to 2% of individuals in the industrialized nations of the world. In a significant series of revelations, his laboratory has shown that contrary to prevailing belief, aortic aneurysms are not caused simply by an inherent weakness of the aorta's extracellular matrix, but by a more complex combination of genetic and biochemical factors. Studies of laboratory mice genetically engineered to have Marfan syndrome, which greatly increases the risk of developing aortic aneurysm, showed that the syndrome is initiated by a deficiency of a structural matrix protein called fibrillin-1. Dr. Dietz's research then demonstrated that this deficiency triggers cellular changes due to excess activity of the TGF-beta signaling pathway. Subsequent identification of gene defects in components of the TGF-beta cascade led to the identification of a novel aneurysm syndrome that was named as the Loewy-Dietz syndrome. Dr. Dietz's team also found that an angiotensin II receptor blocking agent, Losartan, prevented aortic aneurysms in animal models of Marfan syndrome in association with blunting TGF beta activity. Subsequent human studies suggested that Losartan can attenuate abnormal aortic growth in children with the most severe form of Marfan syndrome, and that genetic testing can improve outcome by identifying patients who would benefit from earlier aortic surgery to prevent life-threatening complications. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the 2015 recipient of the Research Achievement Award, Dr. Hal Dietz. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Dr. Krieger for his kind remarks. It is quite special to be recognized for work that has been so inherently rewarding. I mean, even more remarkable to be recognized by peers for whom I have such tremendous admiration and respect. The fact that this award comes from the American Heart Association, an organization with such a venerable history, monumental mission, and tradition of excellence greatly amplifies my sense of pride and appreciation. While humbled by this recognition, I find myself, upon reflection, even more humbled upon accounting of the vast contributions of others that have so greatly enriched my life and enabled my work. I owe a tremendous sense of gratitude and debt uh, to my mentors, notably Victor McCusick, Haig Kazazian, Dave Valley, Claire Francomano, and Reed Piritz, 
who generously mistook naive enthusiasm for potential, created opportunity, and e expertly guided my formative decisions. I acknowledge and thank numerous collaborators who have selflessly shared precious ideas, abilities, and encouragement, with particular mention of Francesco Ramirez, Bart Lowy's, Dan Rifkin, and Jenny Van Eyck. I celebrate my association with numerous partners turned friends in the fight against Marfan syndrome, who helped bring light into dark corners with special recognition of Priscilla Ciccarello, Carolyn Levering, Josephine Grima, and Annie Ranking. I also thank my early and sustained sources of magical funding that rewarded risk taking, including the American Heart Association, the Marfan Foundation, the Smilo and Bloomberg families, NIAMS, the LeDuc Foundation, and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. I am blessed by my patients and their families that have provided inspiration by example and have made me both a better doctor and a better person. Perhaps most of all, I thank my trainees for their brilliance and dedication, and my family, my wife Ada and my daughter Nina, for their love and support and for accommodating the fact that anxiety is my connective tissue. Once again, I thank you all for this great honor. Thank you, Dr. Dietz. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Joseph Lascalzo, who will make the Joseph A. Vita Award presentation. Dr. Lascalzo is the outgoing Editor-in-Chief of the American Heart Association Journal Circulation. He serves as Volunteer Chief of the American Heart Association's Institute for Precision Cardiovascular Medicine and helped create the vision for the Institute as a database collaboration powered by the latest technology, bringing together academic institutions, industry, healthcare systems, and government. Dr. Lascalzo is the Hersey Professor of the Theory and Practice of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and also Chairman of the Department of Medicine and Physician-in-Chief at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Lascalzo is Senior Editor of Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, a member of the Advisory Council of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and a member of the Council of Councils of the National Institutes of Health. Over the past 12 years, Dr. Lascalzo has provided exemplary leadership and guidance as editor-in-chief of the association's flagship journal. In addition, during this time, he played a crucial role in helping the association launch seven new scientific journals, including six in a single year. Please welcome Dr. Joseph Lascalzo. Well, thank you very much for those very kind words, Mark. At this time, I'm very pleased to join you in announcing the winner of the first Joseph A. Vita Award. As many of you know, our dear friend and colleague, Joe Vita, passed away last November. We both knew and worked with Joe for many years, first as a trainee, then as a fellow faculty member at Harvard and at Boston University. Joe epitomized all that is good about academic medicine. To be sure, he was incredibly bright, highly creative, and a very successful clinical investigator. In addition, he had impeccable scientific taste, which was amply demonstrated in his editorial roles at Circulation and the Journal of the American Heart Association. In addition to these remarkable qualities, even more remarkable was his humanity and collegiality. He was an incredible mentor and friend, always putting others' interests ahead of his own and doing so with great humility and grace. We who knew Joe sorely miss his friendship, his wisdom, and his even-tempered approach to the most challenging problems. In order to keep his memory ever fresh within our cardiovascular community, the American Heart Association established the Joseph A. Vita Award 
to be given to the investigator whose publication in the last five years has had great impact in the field of cardiovascular biology or medicine. This award is chosen by all of the AHA journal editors, and in this, its first year, we are pleased to announce that the Joseph A. Vita Award will be given to Joseph Wu of Stanford University. Dr. Wu is an outstanding investigator who has made major contributions to the field of regenerative cardiovascular biology that have had and continue to have great impact on the field. Joe Wu is not only a superb choice for this award based on his scientific contributions, but also embodies its spirit in that he bears many of the same qualities as Joe Vita. We therefore congratulate Joe Wu and wish him continued success. Congratulations, Dr. Wu. Exactly one year ago, at scientific sessions, we announced the first group of researchers to be funded by our Institute for Precision Cardiovascular Medicine. Since that time, we've completed the application process for the Institute's newly created Grand Challenge Awards and Discovery Grants. Today, I am proud to share that we've selected three recipients for our first ever Grand Challenge Awards, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to them now. Joining me on stage are Dr. Greg Lewis of Massachusetts General Hospital, Dr. Dan Rader of the University of Pennsylvania, and Dr. Jennifer Van Eyck of Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Please join me in applause for these three outstanding investigators. I would also like to congratulate the 10 recipients of our Discovery Grants, whose names and photos are shown on the slide now. These grants are made possible by the generous support of AstraZeneca. Please join me in applause for our Discovery Grant recipients. Now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Frank Selke, Chairman of our Committee on Scientific Sessions Program. Dr. Selke is the Carl Carlson and Gloria Carlson Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Brown University Medical School and Chief of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Rhode Island Hospital and Director of the Lifespan Cardiovascular Institute. Please welcome Dr. Selke. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to the 2015 American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. The program committee has worked for the past year to put together what I feel is a truly outstanding program. First, I would like to thank my co-chair, Eric Peterson, the American Heart Association president, Dr. Mark Krieger, as well as members of the CSSP listed for their guidance, insight, and hard work to get this excellent program together. In addition, I would like to thank the staff of the American Heart Association for all their efforts. This year's program has been completely restructured. There are 30 areas of interest within three science types, basic, clinical, and population science. In addition, we have added new topics to increase the educational content of the meeting. They are workplace health, clinical trialists, health technology, frontiers in science, and simulation education. While the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions Program has been totally restructured, we continue to cover every area of basic, clinical, and population science. There are sessions within the meeting in the meeting format, including nursing research science, clinical trials, lifelong congenital heart disease and heart health of the young, and the resuscitation science symposium. In the Frontiers in Science program, 
we have the Arrhythmia Summit and the Vascular Disease Program. There are a total of 932 sessions split fairly evenly between original research sessions and invited didactic and educational sessions. We have increased the proportion of poster presentations to increase the networking interaction between science investigators and those presenting the work. In addition, we've had a record number of submissions for late-breaking clinical trials. On the invited program, we have 10 plenary and 14 special sessions covering all aspects of cardiovascular science and practice. In addition, we have had over 200 other programs, including case theater presentations, simulation, and maintenance of certification program. Merrick Heart Association's scientific session is truly an international meeting. Nearly 30% of our faculty are international, and over half of the original science presented is from outside North America. In addition, we have 22 joint sessions with international cardiovascular uh, organizations with truly outstanding content. The late-breaking clinical trial sessions begin Sunday with failure is not, uh, not an option, new drugs and systems of care. Monday is packed with outstanding content, including the stent trial results, which may be a game changer for the treatment of patients with hypertension. We have devoted a special session entirely to the SPRINT trial. In addition, we have the two-year clinical update of the severe microgurgitation trial funded by the National Institutes of Health and the Cardiothoracic Surgery Network. Finally, we have a session entitled Decreasing the Global Burden of Disease, Breakthrough in Preventions. On Tuesday, we have a late-breaking session on acute coronary syndrome and the PCI, the continuum of care. On Wednesday, we have the presentation of trials dealing with novel therapies for common problems. A highlight of the meeting is always the special lectures, including, of course, the presidential address we have just heard from Dr. Mark Krieger, as well as the Commer Memorial Lecture, which will be given in a few moments by Dr. Andrew Conrad. The Paul Dudley White Lecture this year will be given by Dr. Keith Box of the United Kingdom. We are very fortunate to have internationally renowned cardiac surgeon Elaine Carpentier giving the last year laureate lecture. The Distinguished Science Lecture will be given by Dr. Christine Seidman of Boston. A special plenary lecture will be given by Dr. Gary Gibbons, head of the National Heart, Lung, and Bend Institute, who will give us an idea of the future of funding and other activities of the National Institutes of Health. Two additional highlights you will not want to miss include the U.S. Surgeon General Vice Admiral Vivek Murthy, who will be speaking during the, our precision medicine, medicine sessions on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Also, Dr. Victor Zhao, President of the Institute of Medicine, We'll leave a session this afternoon at 3.45 on innovation in medicine. Yesterday, Dr. Zhao led a discussion on a recent Institute of Medicine report on cardiac arrest. This year, we have a great assortment of case theater presentations, learning at the movies, which will be 45-minute live presentations covering many aspects of difficult clinical problems and challenges. These will include optimal treatment of severely calcified coronary arteries, management of the often forgotten tricuspid valve, stenting the thoracic aorta, and what to do with this mitral valve. Another difficult problem of fulminant myocarditis will be a topic of a case theater presentation, as will be transcatheter aortic valve replacement with left ventricular assist devices and MRI-directed VT ablation. We have increased the number of poster presentations in order to improve networking, communication, and education. We have a large number of e-abstract theaters to help encourage interactions between presenters and the audience members. Finally, we have a large number of lounges throughout the poster hall for everyone to take a break between presentations. We have two very exciting innovative frontier in science programs, both of which will be held on Monday. The Vascular Disease Frontier in Science program will cover regenerative approaches to limb salvage and wound care in advanced peripheral arterial disease, and secondly, will emphasize breakthroughs in advanced therapies for venous disease. We have a great arrhythmia research summit covering all aspects of the genesis, diagnosis, and risk assessment interventions for cardiac arrhythmias. Dr. Zubin Iapin and Dr. Eric Peterson have put together a truly outstanding program on health technology exploring the role of technology on the treatment and prevention of cardiovascular disease. 
This program will examine ways to drive innovation and collaboration in the marketplace with the overall goal of improving cardiovascular outcomes. A special program on workplace health will be chaired by Donna Arnett, past president of the American Heart Association. This one-day program will feature leading researchers in the area of workplace health promotion and health education. Workplace health has become a leading topic, not only for clinicians, but also the population in general. We really look forward to this exciting session. We have a special program devoted to clinical trials led by two of the nation's leading trialists, Dr. Elliot Antman and Dr. Bob Harrington. This program will address trial methods, conundrums around design, hot issues, and temporary concerns related to trials. This program will be held on Tuesday. For the first time, we have a new simulation educational program. The first emphasizes three-dimensional e-health medical training using a touch screen format which will offer professionals and students a clatter of life lauren platform covering dozens of clinical cases, including management of atherosclerosis and hypercholesterolemia, arrhythmic problems, stroke, and heart failure. The second simulation program is dedicated to mechanical circulatory support and will offer attendees the basics of left ventricular assist devices, the artificial heart, and how they work, are regulated, and monitored. EP Central is a home base for the electrophysiologic community at scientific sessions, and it's a good place for clinicians and scientists to gather, network, exchange information, or just to relax in the science and technology hall. This has been organized by Dr. Paul Wang, and will feature career development activities and provide information relevant to the EP community. In order to help uh, get around scientific sessions, we have the AHA Events Mobile Meeting Guide. Using your smartphone, you can search presenters, topics, tracks, hotels, or locations of activities. While it's quality intuitive, and even a surgeon can handle uh, this, if you have any problems, there's a global search option uh, to help you locate specific events or speakers. There's also an app help desk in the registration area of the convention center. Monday is Wear Red Day, so be sure to wear your red dress, red pants, or red tie to show your support for the goals and activities of the American Heart Association. Tuesday is uh, Sneaker Day, so wear your running shoes or tennis shoes to show your support of the role of exercise in optimizing cardiovascular health. On Tuesday, we have the Abstract Submitter Reception for all abstract submitters from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And don't forget to uh, have your card punch while visiting exhibits for chances to win prizes, which will be awarded daily. As you're listening to research presentations or clinical programs, uh, please consider sessions you may want to submit for next year's program. The submission period opens November 30th, 2015, and runs until January 4th, 2016. Next year's scientific sessions will be held in New Orleans, November 12th through 16th. We look forward to seeing you there. In conclusion, I feel we have an outstanding program at this year's scientific sessions, and I hope we will enjoy it. Thank you.